Since 1971, HAC has provided below market financing for affordable housing and community development, technical assistance and training services, research and information products, and policy formulation to enable solutions for rural communities. Welcome to today's webinar, WaterSense Labeled Homes version 2.0. WaterSense Labeled Homes meet consumers' demand for a whole house solution to help them save water, energy, and money while maintaining a high level of performance. Compared to a typical home on average, a WaterSense Labeled Home can save a family 50,000 gallons of water a year or more. This webinar will provide the specifics of how WaterSense Labeled Homes must achieve at least 30% more water efficiency than a typical new construction. Under the home certification system, they are verified and certified to meet EPA's mandatory checklist and achieve EPA's water efficiency criteria. Today's webinar is sponsored by USDA Rural Development. Today we're joined by Olga M. Cano. Olga is an environmental engineer in the HOMES program at the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency's WaterSense program. She's involved in the development and implementation of the WaterSense HOME specification and certification system. Through this program, the EPA aims to promote water efficient systems and practices in the residential sector. Prior to joining EPA in 2015, Ms. Cano worked as an architect in the hospitality and resident, residential sector for more than seven years and then went on to serve in the Peace Corps as a water and sanitary volunteer in Peru as part of the Peace Corps' Master International Program. Ms. Cano holds a, a BA in architecture from Florida International University and a Master of Science in Environmental Engineering from Michigan Technological University. Welcome, Olga. Hello, everyone, and thank you again to the uh, Housing Assistant Council for um, having us on. Uh, it's always very exciting to come on board and really um, talk about our shared passion, uh, which is uh, water efficiency and the benefits that water efficiency can have, uh, specifically in the rural communities uh, for families that um, can highly benefit from lower utility bills. And uh, of course, the added benefits of protecting our water resources. So thank you again. Uh, thank you for that introduction. It's uh, very exciting to be here. Um, so we'll start off uh, with a, a little bit of um, just overview of the program, um, where WaterSense started um, and sort of the different aspects of the program. Uh, we'll also talk a little bit about the homes uh, section of the program specifically and where we are in terms of version two. So sort of the transition that we've made from the original version um, to where we are today. Um, we'll also talk uh, a little bit more about the role that our verifiers are playing in this new version and how they uh, can come on board and next steps for the program. Um, you are welcome to um, make, make any questions via the chat, uh, and we'll be happy to answer them as we go along, uh, but we'll also try to save some time at the end of the webinar to have uh, additional questions or an open discussion as needed. So WaterSense as a program was um, initiated in 2006. Um, WaterSense is a voluntary program, meaning that um, unlike uh, many of the EPA programs, it's not mandatory for states uh, or local jurisdictions to um, implement it. Uh, therefore, um, we're open to the public. It's a program that is absolutely free. Uh, we offer um, technical uh, support in terms of the HOMES program, uh, but initially the, the program uh, was started to certify products, so uh, plumbing products such as shower heads, uh, plumbing fixtures, and we'll talk a little bit more about this um, further along. Um, so like it says on the slide, uh, products where we started, we also have programs, which uh, is where the HOMES program falls under. Um, we talk a lot about practices uh, in terms of um, human behavior and how we can uh, sort of teach people on how to better conserve water um, and homes, which um, in our terms, uh, we look at as a building science approach and more of a, a, a whole um, system approach to water efficiency, because this is where we are able to join uh, both the products with uh, the actual um, with the actual uh, behavior of uh, how people are um, interacting with their water use on a daily basis. 
Um, so a little bit more about that. We focus on practices, people and products, and it's in that middle ground where we really see uh, the the um, the benefits of water efficiency. So um, if we had any of these three elements uh, separate, we really couldn't see uh, what the, the true benefits are. So it's only in us bringing all of these together that we can have a long term and uh, sustained water efficiency impact. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, the program started in the labeling of actual plumbing products. And so um, as of now, we have more than 37,000 uh, water sense labeled products um, and different models. And these are the types of products that are labeled. So we have laboratory faucets, which you find in residential bathrooms, uh, shower heads, tank type toilets, um, commercial toilets, uh, the flushing urinals, as well as some outdoor uh, irrigation products, such as the irrigation controllers and spray sprinkler bodies. Uh, we also offer professional certification programs, uh, and these apply specifically to our irrigation professionals. Um, so we have irrigation system designers, um, irrigation system auditors, as well as irrigation system installation and maintenance professionals. And for those of you that may be familiar with our current version, uh, or I should, I guess I could just shouldn't say current anymore, but our original version, version one, um, bringing one of these professionals on board, it was a mandatory uh, requirement of our checklist. And we'll talk a little bit more about how those um, requirements have changed. Um, now, the Water Sense Labels program. Um, it's meant to promote water efficiency specifically in homes. Um, water Sense can be applied both in single, res single house residences uh, as well as multifamily. Um, in the multifamily realm, we do uh, certify each unit individually, so we're not certifying the entire building as a whole. Um, it's uh, through the through the homes program specifically, we're able to communicate the value and the benefits of the water sense labeled products. Uh, whereas when we have the products there, they sort of um, are independent of a. Uh, of anything else uh, in their in their um, realm, uh, but once they're in the house, we can really understand how that it, how that efficiency is really impacting the water use uh, in the home as a whole, um, and it provides quantifiable water savings for both the homeowners and for utilities. So seeing uh, the behavior and the water usage within the home. Um, the a little bit more about the homes program. Um, it's a national uh, new home new home program um, that compre comprehensively uh, looks at the entire water use of a home. So we're looking both indoors and outdoors. Um, uh, during uh, under the new version, version two, uh, there is a requirement of at least thirty percent more efficiency than the uh, typical standard construction. Um, the each home is independently certified um, so that uh, we have um, transparency through the entire process. It is also designed, uh, this new version, we've worked hard to, to uh, design the program and the certification structure so that it better aligns with our other sister certification programs, such as Energy Star and Indoor Air Plus, if, if any of you are familiar with those. Um, and of course, it's backed by the credibility of, of EPA. Um, a little bit about residential uh, water use. Um, so we know that homes are approximately uh, use approximately 26.6 billion gallons of water per day. Um, and this data point is pre pandemic. So we know that that data point has increased throughout um, this past year and a half that we've all been home. Um, so this impact uh, of the program uh, can be pretty generous uh, when we look at uh, water usage. Uh, most of our water uh, uses, use happens indoors. However, this can fluctuate across climatic regions, uh, where in some regions, uh, a lot of the water use may be used outdoors instead. This infographic uh, that we have on this slide shows how water is usually used in a home, uh, with the highest use happening in the showers. We hope to certify at least 10% of, um, of the annual stock of residences, um, and that's sort of um, our very uh, optimistic goal at this point. 
Um, and so uh, as we've as the program has developed, we've started to find more correlations with the building industry. And one of the, the big questions is, well, why does water matter so much to the building industry? And we are finding that um, more and more the access to water, the availability of water in specific regions and specific uh, sites that are, are waiting to be um, urbanized um, are really uh, dependent on whether there is water there's access to water or how that uh, new community will impact existing communities. So um, coming in with a project that is water efficient can all can be a great incentive for local municipalities to allow these communities to happen. Um, we know that the cost of water is increasing. Uh, we know that many companies are now much more interested in, um, in becoming uh, responsible stewards of the environment. Um, and so this is a great way to do this. Um, again, the wa water is an increasingly important part of the land entitlement process. And uh, of course, uh, corporate disclosure and reporting. So as investors are looking, you know, um, to see where they put their funds, um, this can also play a big role. And on the other hand, well, why does water, why does the building industry matter to us as a program? Well, we find that um, it is uh, one of the best ways um, for us to sort of uh, implement water efficiency from the very beginning um, of the uh, of a home's right lifetime. And so most of the, some of the, uh, most efficient uh, water systems are e easier to be uh, implemented and designed um, or included from the design phase as well as implemented, you know, throughout the construction. So things like uh, hot water distribution uh, could be very expensive to to happen during a renovation, whereas if uh, homes are designed with these types of systems, like an efficient hot water distribution system in mind, it's much more cost effective and in the long run, much more uh, water efficient to do these things from the very beginning. Uh, and now we'll dive into the actual uh, program, the, the actual uh, version two specifically. So just for a little bit of background, um, the program itself, WaterSense, was established in 2006. So it wasn't until three years later in 2009 where we implemented a homes program, which again is a holistic view, a more of a, a building science approach to, um, to water efficiency. Um, so that's where we had version one. Then we did um, various iterations of the program with some updates, um, including uh, our irrigation professionals and some of our turf uh, requirements have changed. And so that was uh, what we referred to as version 1.1 and also version 1.2. Then in February of 2018, we uh, put out a notice of intent, uh, which we refer to as an NOI. And this is what we told the industry. Um, folks, we're thinking about updating our homes program. We've seen that the industry has evolved uh, a lot in the past. Um, I guess at that point would have been nine years. But, um, you know, we, we have been starting to see many more um, certification programs, uh, much more interest from builders uh, in terms of uh, high efficiency, high performing homes, and really the, the water efficiency industry in itself um, had made a lot of changes. And so uh, we were trying to, to see what feedback we would get from the industry um, to better understand how the program needed to be updated. Um, I know a lot of the challenges from the uh, the previous version What that is that is that it was very prescriptive um, and it tended to be uh, somewhat very rigid for uh, regions that, for instance, um, couldn't get much of their savings outdoors. And so um, this new version looks at how we could, uh, or we have added more flexibility into um, how we could be more regionally appropriate so that folks can um, decide, you know, designers and builders can decide where it makes the most sense to save the water. And then finally, uh, June of 2020, uh, we set out a pilot program with version two where we were able to sort of test drive the new certification structure, um, the new checklist, the new verification protocols and site. Um, I received some feedback from that. And then finally, in February of this year, we were able to roll out the program in full swing uh, and have it fully available for everyone to, to use. Um, from the version two pilot, um, we received a lot of feedback, um, uh, even though that the program was just was uh, regionally specific in Nevada. And we had ResNet um, 
who was our, our main um, home certification organization running the pilot, and they were using their um, water efficiency tool known as HERS H2O. And so under this uh, certification tool, uh, I'm sorry, under this uh, water efficiency measuring tool, um, each house needs to score a 70 or less to be uh, water sense certified. And the way that their scale works is that um, it's from zero to 100, um, or I guess it could be above 100, but uh, the scale that we manage is from zero to 100, with zero being um, there's no water use, uh, the house is completely um, uh, self-sustained in terms of, of uh, needing water, um, to um, 100 being, you know, there's a, the water use is at that threshold of not being efficient. So the 70% really falls into that 30% efficiency, which we'll talk more about later on. So that 30% efficiency that we're looking at um, for the water sense certification. Um, so 100 would be like the use of a typical construction uh, without implementing any water efficiency um, systems. Um, just to get familiar before we jump into the technical aspects of the specification, these are some of the new stakeholders um, that we are engaging with under this new version. So we have the home certification organizations, and so these are uh, the organizations that essentially are overseeing the certification, um, and um, they're independent and approved um, that are and they are licensed by us. Um, they're responsible for ensuring all the quality assurance, uh, the training that the verifiers need. Um, and any authorization uh, authorization that's needed by the verifiers. They're impartial to the entire process and they uh, provide the reporting back to us on a um, quarterly basis. Um, the HCOs are also responsible for administering the what we refer to as the water sense approved certification method, um, which is the HERS H2O is an example of what a um, water sense approved certification method uh, may be. Then we have the water sense home verifiers uh, who are akin to raters in the in the energy world. Um, so these are the folks that go out to the field that make sure that everything on the checklist has been um, achieved and that it will essentially uh, certify that this 30 percent efficiency along with our checklist, essentially all of our requirements uh, along with the requirements of the HCO have been met. And so then the, the home uh, could then achieve a certification. And uh, finally, but not least, we have our home builder partners. And this uh, stakeholder group actually has not changed in the way that we interacted with them previously. Uh, builders have always been asked to become partners um, prior to certifying any of their homes. Partnership is absolutely free. There is no cost to partnership, but we do like to um, come into an agreement with our with our builders um, just to uh, provide all the technical support. Uh, provide we provide marketing support, um, technical support, and really to engage our builders and feel that commitment of designing and building water efficient homes. Um, a little bit more new terminology that has been introduced under this version. Um, we have what we've called a, a PCM, which is essentially the water efficiency measuring tool that HCO submit as part of their application. So this tool um, becomes a Wacom once once it is approved. Um, Once, um, well, for those of you that are that are um, interested in knowing more about version two and all of the specifics um, and sort of getting into the weeds of all these, is, this is the list of the documentation that essentially summarizes uh, all of the updates uh, of our of our new version. So we have the specification, which includes our checklist and our 30 percent efficiency requirement um, explanation. Then we have the certification system, uh, which explains all the changes that have been made uh, as to how organizations can apply and can uh, the requisites that are needed to become an HCO. For those of you who are familiar with our uh, version one program, uh, we only had one. Um, we didn't use the term HCO, but it was our program administrator, and that was Reset. Under version two, we now um, our certification structure has become uh, much more flexible in terms of allowing uh, uh, other organizations to play the same role that Resnet used to play. So right now, 
and we will talk about this uh, here in a few slides. Uh, we have uh, ResNet has joined as an HCO as well as Home Innovation. Um, so that's also very exciting. Um, then we have the WaterSense technical evaluation process, and this is um, the longer and the more detailed of our of our documents. And um, this describes exactly step by step how it is that we go about evaluating the water efficiency tools that are submitted as part of their application. So, for instance, the HERS H two O that was submitted by ResNet went through this evaluation process, so that um, us as a program. Uh, could uh, certify and um, verify that uh, their tool was indeed measuring water efficiency in a way that we could be confident that each house would be saving at least 30% of that standard water use. And then finally, we have the water sense specification uh, for home supporting statement, which essentially um, documents the rationale of the program stru structure and uh, some of the major program elements. So what is the process to label a home? Well, first we, um, the home builder uh, becomes a partner with uh, WaterSense, um, and then they start working with a home verifier uh, or HCO to understand what, what is required to achieve uh, certification. Uh, then the WaterSense home uh, verifier confirms that the home does meet WaterSense once the house has been built and that the verifier can get in sight and verify all of the items on the checklist. And then finally, the HCO issues um, the water sense label to the home, um, as long as, of course, it's met all of the requirements. Of course, this is a very summarized list. There's a lot of very minute details and steps that go in between, uh, between uh, any of these three steps. But um, as, as a global picture, this is sort of the process that we, uh, we go through. So what are the technical and organizational requirements? Um, so uh, the house needs to meet all of the uh, mandatory checklist um, and it must uh, achieve that 30% efficiency. The mandatory checklist, which I will show you here in a minute, um, must be completed uh, by all homes, regardless of what uh, program you're certifying under. So if you're going to be under ResNet or uh, Home Innovations, um, they each have their own water efficiency uh, models or uh, measuring um, uh, tools. Uh, so regardless of those, um, every home has to achieve, has to cover all of the checklists and has to achieve that 30%. Um, it ensures that all water sense label homes contain a minimum set of the features uh, to meet the homeowner's expectations of performance. So um, no matter, you know, where you're purchasing your home, if it's water sense, uh, certified, the homeowner can be assured that it's going to meet all of these very essential um, requirements. Um, the criteria for the checklist features are basic measurements of quality and performance. Um, they're universal app universally applicable uh, to all the homes, and it's easily attainable in little or no incremental cost. So uh, two categories that are reflected in the mandatory checklist are A, the verification that the home is free of water leaks. So um, this is kind of a no brainer. Uh, we don't expect any new home to have any leaks, but it's important for us to uh, make it part of our checklist because it would just be unacceptable uh, for a home to be certified under water sense and be leaky, right? Um, we know that leaks are a major loss of, of uh, water. Um, and so um, this is a, a big point for us. And then two, um, that the water sense, that all of the plumbing uh, fixtures uh, throughout the home are water sense labeled. Um, so here's the actual checklist. Uh, this top part, uh, the big part is all about leaks. And so we're looking at leaks at every, essentially every connection point of the house. And then we also list our, uh, the plumbing fixtures, which need to be water sense uh, labeled. One of the questions that we get asked often is, well, why can't we just set a um, an efficiency rate, you know, so uh, set a toilet at 1.8 uh, versus calling out the water sense label is that while there are plumbing products out there that um, achieve the same water efficiency per se, um, we don't know if they've been tested. Our, our, our products are all tested for both the efficiency, but also for performance. So, um, so when we see that there are uh, either other programs or codes uh, that are making requirements 
simply on the efficiency level, um, we don't feel very comfortable about that because it could potentially be a product that while it achieves the efficiency, might not be performing as well or up to the standard. So we really, you know, stand behind our label and really try to, um, you know, back it up and say, you know, this is this is what the requirement is because we trust and we know due to all the lab testing uh, that is in place, et cetera, that water sense labeled products are both efficient and perform well. And also we don't want our builders getting any callbacks. Um, so what happened to the outdoors? For those of you that might be familiar with version one, um, you know that there was a very prescriptive list list uh, for the indoors as well as for the outdoors. Uh, there were very there were uh, various requirements that I need to meet be meet be met uh, for outdoors. However, we also received the feedback that this was one of our more challenging areas. It was meeting all of the outdoor requirements, and so. Um, some of the feedback was that uh, another part of the feedback was also the fact that, you know, throughout the country we have so many different climatic um, scenarios. And so it's hard to really apply just like a one one size fits all checklist for everything. So we knew that we needed to implement additional flexibility into the outdoors. So what has happened is that we have removed the outdoors from our mandatory checklist. However, this is where a 30% efficiency play comes into play. So we know that homes, even if they meet all of our efficiency, all of our mandatory checklist items indoors, which are the previous slide, which are all of our leaks and the plumbing features, we know that homes will not achieve a 30% efficiency um, threshold just meeting these. We know that in order to achieve that 30%, people are going to have to look outdoors, regardless of what region you're in. What is nice about this is that you can now then pick and choose where you want to invest the most in implementing um, your most efficient systems. Uh, you know, if you're in a hot, dry um, uh, climate, then you really need to work hard outdoors to save that water. But if you're in a cold, wet climate, then it's not going to be, then you, you don't need to implement as many water efficient uh, systems outdoors, but you really need to look indoors. So this 30% efficiency uh, requirement is really sort of encompassing um, all of these, uh, you know, looking at both indoors and outdoors to achieve it. Um, so a little bit more about the 30% uh, water efficiency is uh, even though, like I mentioned, all the homes have to do the uh, meet the checklist, um, it does not preclude or disadvantage homes in states uh, where the codes are more efficient. So uh, here we're talking about, you know, the Californias, the Denver's um, of the country where we know that plumbing codes are, have already adopted some of these uh, or, or higher uh, efficiency requirements for their building codes. But even in those states, um, you know, we did uh, various scenarios specifically in California where we found that when you implement the plumbing code, these homes, they are more efficient uh, than than the than the standard home, uh, but they were about between 13 and 15 percent more efficient. And so they still weren't getting to that 30 percent that water sense is asking for. Um, it also maintains the water savings compared to version one. So uh, version one, it was very prescriptive and because it was the same prescriptive checklist throughout the country, homes could fluctuate of how efficient they were they were going. So we could have homes that were 20% more efficient versus homes that were, you know, 30, 40% more efficient than the standard. Um, so this one, you know, this this 30% also provides that scale. Um, and it provides a balance for the indoor and the outdoor emissions um, that scale appro appropriate to climate. Um, so how are we measuring that 30%? Um, so we allow the HCOs to develop their own method for measuring water. So like I mentioned, ResNet is using Hearst H2O. Um, home innovations, like we'll uh, talk about uh, here in a little bit, um, they have a prescriptive path, but they also have a performance path where they're using the WRI. And so it works within the existing framework of what the uh, HCOs already have been set and also protects the integrity of our program and ensures that every home is achieving that 30 percent. 
And so when we review uh, these methods, um, we go through the technical evaluation uh, to make sure we basically put um, each of these models into a stress test. And we we plug in scenarios from all over the country in really extreme um, sort of circumstances. So uh, a small a small home and a big yard and a big, uh, you know, and a large home and a small yard and see how those all behave in the in the model. And make sure that every home, regardless of its of its size, its lot size, that ratio, um, that they are able to achieve that thirty percent. Um, and so here are some of the considerations um, that go into the technical evaluation. So when we're looking at indoors. We're looking at toilet, shower heads, faucets, uh, both in bathroom faucets and kitchen faucets. We look at the clothes washers, uh, dishwashers, bathtubs, hot water distribution systems, whether you have a research system uh, or any other type of system, uh, thermostatic shut off valves uh, in the showers, leaks, of course, again, a big one, and then um, some HCOs may apply other, other sorts of um, uh, systems, search, uh, leak detection systems, or things uh, of that. Um, and then outdoors, um, we're looking at plant type, irrigation, um, whether they're including uh, water sense uh, certified products out, outdoors, um, whether they're uh, implementing irrigation scheduling technologies, uh, any efficient irrigation designs, or if they're using one of our uh, water sense um, uh, trained uh, irrigation professionals. Um, and then uh, HERS H2O specifically uses a method that's called the RICI. Now, um, looking at the HCO organizational requirements and how we were able to sort of open up these requirements so that other organizations were able to, to participate. Um, we're looking, uh, the evaluation that goes into that is, we're looking that the HCO meets a specific organizational requirements. Um, we're looking uh, at how the organization has developed their water measuring uh, method, uh, so the certification method development process. And uh, we're looking at, uh, again, that stress test that we are um, putting the, the models through. And uh, what do the HCOs do? So um, we look to see that they have uh, specific protocols in place to meet all of these criteria. So independent oversight, quality assurance, verifier training and authorization, um, home verification protocols, impartiality, and messaging and reporting. And uh, of course, as part of the application, every HCO needs to submit uh, documentation detailing on how they achieve all of these. So the certification method development. Um, so the HCO has to demonstrate how the their water efficiency tool has been developed, right? So that's uh, the PCM. Um, so we consider whether they utilized an ANSI approved standard um, or if the HCO is a public agency, then did they follow the requirements of the jurisdiction um, that has authority over them? Um, or were they able to demonstrate the development in accordance with uh, alternative requirements based on the ANSI essential requirements? So there's a lot of flexibility that's given here, um, and we've appreciated this because different organizations are able to develop their models in different uh, in different ways. And so um, we don't want to say that one is better over the other, but we do need to uh, make sure that the process that they have gone through is one that's legitimate and one that is transparent. Um, so that uh, you know, people can continue to trust of the program. Um, so here we'll talk a little bit more about our current HCOs, which I've already mentioned. And so um, we've got ResNet, who has been uh, our program administrator from from the very start, so back from 2009. But now with our added flexibility, we also have Home Innovation Research Labs, which um, they're the folks that run uh, the NGBS program. So for ResNet, uh, the water efficiency tool that's being used is the HERS H2O. Um, their system type is a performance rating system. The score that needs to be achieved under that is at least a, a, a 70 or less. So anything under 70 will can become WaterSense uh, certified. Um, this uh, certification system can uh, do both new and existing single family homes, and it, it, uh, it covers a national scope. Uh, with home innovations, like I mentioned earlier, they've actually been approved for two paths. So they have a prescriptive path 
where you have to uh, achieve the entirety of the of the mandatory checklist um, in order to receive certification. But they also have their performance path, um, which uh, implements the WRI tool. And so um, for uh, the certification threshold under the prescriptive path, again, they just have to achieve the, the entire checklist. But if you're doing the performance path, then the, the score needs to be of 64 and lower because that's the threshold at where the houses under NGBS achieve that 30% efficiency. Um, unlike uh, ResNed, um, the Home Innovations is able to certify under new and existing single family and multifamily homes, and their scope uh, also is national. Uh, the reason why we list the scope here is because we have um, other organizations have express, expressed interest in applying to be HCOs, but they are at a regional level. And those are also um, uh, possibilities. Um, we could be able to approve HCOs that just work in a specific region or a specific uh, state um, or specific climatic zone. So, um, that's the reason why we're we're noting the, the national scope there or the regional scope. Um, these are just uh, again our HCOs and some of their contacts. If anyone is interested in in reaching out and getting more information, and so one thing that I wanted to do was present. Um, it's very different from our from version one where everyone just had the same checklist, and if you achieve the checklist, then you were certified. Here, because we are working under various organizations and they each have their own unique um, uh, water efficiency measuring tool, then um, it, be it can become a little bit less linear as to um, how the houses can compare. So what we wanted to do is essentially uh, present a scenario um, with the exact same features and show how each of the how this same building um, would perform under the the different um, the different programs. Um, so the sample home that we have here, it's a home that's in Min it's in Minneapolis, Minnesota. It's twenty four hundred square feet, four bedroom house. It sits on a four thousand square foot lot. It has uh, water sense labeled toilets um, that have a one point two eight gallon per flush. Um, then we have uh, the bathroom faucets at a 1.2 gallon per minute uh, flow. Uh, the kitchen faucet, which is not water sense certified because we don't certify kitchen faucets, it's at a 1.5 gallon per minute flow. Uh, and then the shower heads at a 2.0. This house also includes efficient hot water distribution system. It has Energy Star certified dishwasher and clothes washer. Uh, and the landscape area, which has a, a 1,600 square feet, has a water sense labeled spray body, uh, uh, spray sprinkler bodies, has water sense labeled uh, weather based irrigation controller. Uh, the system was installed and uh, commissioned by a professional certified uh, by the water sense uh, label program. So these are all um, in addition to all of our mandatory requirements, which this house has checked off. They have additional um, water efficient systems or practices that have given them additional points in, uh, in order to pass under all three programs. So this same home um, passes under the home innovations prescriptive path, meaning that they achieved they they were able to complete the entire checklist. Um, they received a score of 69 under the ResNet Hearst H2O scoring tool, and they received a number, a, a score of uh, a rating index of 64 under the HR performance path. Um, so now we wanted to jump a little bit into, um, well, what can we do, you know, within the home to, to make it more water efficient, to get it closer to, to achieving certification. And so we'll talk a little bit more about home design. Um, many of these systems were actually prescriptive requirements uh, under our version one, uh, but they're, they have been proven to, to be water efficient. Uh, um, um, I'm sorry, they have been proven to be systems that indeed save water. And so we, want, we would like to continue promoting them um as good practices uh as folks you know uh continue to design and build uh, water efficient homes so um 
So an ideal water sense uh, efficient home or a water efficient home would have fast hot water. So this means that we're looking into uh, efficient water distribution systems. Um, Savings that perform. So again, this is going back to our water sense labeled products, which are labeled uh, to both uh, safe water and perform well. Uh, peace of mind. So we uh, also like to promote the Energy Star products and specifically dishwashers and clothes washers. In order for these products to have become energy efficient, they had to also tap into their water savings. And so we trust that these, uh, we know that these products um, are also saving water. And um, outdoor ease, uh, we never, you know, we can never uh, turn our back on the outdoors. We know that uh, providing appropriate landscaping and if irrigation systems are installed, that they're installed properly, this is what's going to um, get that house to that 30% efficiency. So for the hot water distribution systems, this is, this is a big one and one that really has to be thought of at the design phase. Uh, because once you're in the construction phase, it's going to be very difficult to redesign, um, you know, all of your plumbing or et cetera, or make any any adjustments. Um, so really, we really promote for this to happen at the design phase. So um, the, the idea for the hot water distribution system is that they reduce the waiting time for hot water to be uh, delivered to the point of use. Um, which of course saves in the water wasted while we're all waiting for, for that water to change uh, in temperature. Um, having uh, heating water is typically uh, the second largest use of energy within the home. Um, and so again, that taps into that, that water, you know, just not letting your pipes um, uh, hold on to that water and then having to purge them before we see a, a temperature change. And so uh, water since label homes uh, minimize water loss by storing no more than half a gallon of water between the hot water source and any of the hot water fixtures. Uh, the hot water source is typically a water heater, but it can also be a demand initiated recirculation line. And so uh, we do offer some design guides uh, and technical assistance in terms of um, what is most appropriate for specific designs. Um, so we have these uh, sort of if and then scenarios where um, we sort of suggest what type of system would be best to, to include in, uh, in your designs. Um, so we have demand initiated uh, research systems, uh, trunk and branch, our whole house manifold systems. Um, there are others, but these are some that I just put out here for, for an example. And then of course, again, um, efficient outdoor design, which can be a huge, uh, you know, the outdoors can, can represent a huge uh, percentage of the water that's used. Um, so it provides homeowners with attractive and water efficient landscapes that are easy to maintain. Uh, that's always key. Um, the why? Well, on average, a single family home in the United States uses about 30% of their water outdoors. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, in some hotter and drier areas of the country, um, this can be as high as 70%. So a regionally appropriate landscape can also help homeowners cope with drought and comply with um, any times of local watering restrictions that they may face. And how? Well, the Wacom's, um, which are the, the water efficiency tool, uh, measuring tools that uh, the HCOs are using, they address this outdoor water efficiency through a combination of appropriate landscape design as well as efficient irrigation systems. Um, and then we also wanted to talk a little bit more about verifiers. What is the role that they play? Um, under this new version, uh, our relationship with verifiers um, would like to think that it's going to grow closer. Before we used to we used to have providers um, that really uh, interacted with the verifiers, but now uh, with the verifiers just working with the HCOs, we're hoping that verifiers can come to us a lot more or count on us uh, for much more technical support uh, and sort of guidance as um, as they get themselves out there promoting uh, water efficiency. So approved verifiers uh, that are in good standing uh, will be referred to the water sense home verifiers uh, will will be referred as water sense home verifiers. Um, even though verifiers are not partners, we are a very uh, keen into continuing to support uh, the verifying um, or reading industry. Um, they were designated with a new promotional mark. So this uh, logo that you see here uh, is available for any verifiers to sort of promote their services. 
Um, they're also listed on the new on a new water sense verifier search tool. So we have developed a tool where uh, we can load uh, in all the active um, raters verifiers that are uh, carrying out water sense homes verifications and folks can come to our website and find you um, on that website and sort of connect with you through that through that manner. Um, HCOs are responsible for training and approving the verifiers and providing information on verifiers to EPA. So even though the HCOs essentially are managing the verifiers um, and they and it's the HCO's responsibility to report to us, um, we still provided. Uh, so each, each HCO is provided with a uh, training, um, a, a water sense specific training that they are supposed to deliver to each verifier. And so that uh, water sense specific training is the same across all HCOs. And then, of course, each HCO has a specific training um, that's specific to their water efficiency measuring tool um, as to how um, to certify the home or how to verify the home. And then verifiers will verify homes seeking the water sense label in accordance to the specific to the specification, which is the EPA specification and the HCO's WACOM, which is the HCO's requirements to achieve this um, 30 percent. Uh, this is a snapshot or a, a screenshot of what the our new verifier tool looks like. Um, and so it lists your name, your company, uh, where in the country you are, and which HCO you're affiliated with. And verifiers, again, can be affiliated with, with um, one or more uh, of our participating HCOs. And so what are the next steps for our program? Well, um, Back in June, we had a, a big uh, sort of um, landmark date where uh, projects that were permitted um, up until June 30th of 2021 could pursue any of the versions. So version uh, one, uh, version 1.2 or version 2, um, any of those projects could be certified uh, under either version. Um, after any projects, um, permitted after June 30th, so starting July 1st, would have to uh, under would have to participate on the Water Sense Version 2 program. Uh, however, uh, homes that were permitted um, from June 30th or before have all the way until the end of the year, so December 31st, to receive that certification. But once we get into 2022, so January 1st, 2022, every home that seeks water sense uh, certification will have to be certified under version two. Um, where we're going after this well the program it was a lot of work to sort of um get the program up to version two and get version two out the door um to receive the feedback and and you know make it official but now we've got a program to run so now it's sort of where the real work starts right so we're working uh really hard on getting more HCOs on board. So we have a few more organizations that are sort of in that um, application uh, process um, as we speak. Uh, so hoping to have a couple more organizations. We don't foresee having, you know, more than, I don't know, uh, five or six organizations participating in the HCO role, um, mainly because uh, it, there aren't many organizations that would meet that uh, certification structure that is um, mandated uh, to become an HCO. And also because the there are many of these organizations that work at a national scale. So there's uh, already even between the two that we have um, a lot of uh, uh, or more than one option into into certification. Um, we'll be transitioning our existing builder partners from version one to version two. So all of the building partners that had been uh, participating uh, previously or that had any projects uh, where they were um, where they were recommending uh version one or where they were in pursuing version one uh we can help them make the transition into version two and see how you know that would fit um of course we're updating all of our training and educational materials to align with version two a lot of the things that you will find on our website right now still align with version one and so um as you can imagine in the government it's a very bureaucratic process and just updating a lot of these resources just takes a lot of, of time and approvals from the from you know, various parties uh, within the government. Um, 
We, of course, continue to support WaterSense Utility and promotional partners and um, basically spreading the word. Uh, we're very excited about this new version. We uh, truly believe that um, it has opened the doors for many to participate. Um, we think that the, the additional flexibility, uh, especially given the outdoors, uh, is huge and um, and that it has removed a lot of barriers for many that were interested, but maybe um, could not make it happen for for uh, other reasons. Um, so with that, um, here is my contact information uh, for any of you who might be familiar with the program. Uh, Jonah Shine, uh, who's my colleague, has been with the program for a while, and he's also uh, available to answer any questions or provide any technical assistance. But uh, like I said, there is no cost uh, to reaching out to us or to partnering as builders with our program. Um, as a government program, we don't collect any fees um, and we're essentially uh, here to serve the public. So anything that we can uh, help with, please feel free to, to reach out. Um, and that's it for me. Thank you. So at this point, we would like to ask if anyone has any questions, um, you can type them in the chat for Ogla. And also watch out for your uh, watch out for the uh, survey that should be sent out for an email this weekend as well. Um, and you can also use the raised hand feature and you can be called upon before unmuting your before you we un, you can unmute your mic. So at the cross the top, you should see the raise hand feature. And if you um, click on that, we you can un, unmute your mic. Um, so one of the questions we have is um, how do homeowners know their homes have uh, got a water sense label? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. Um, typically, if you're purchasing a new home, um, the home builder or the realtor uh, should have some sort of paperwork uh, for you um, showing that the certification has been achieved. Um, if you if you don't find that, you can always reach out to us. Uh, we do have a record. We do keep a record of um, of the homes that have been certified, so we can we can definitely um, verify in that way. OK, great. And then um, does it cost more? I'm sure it does to build a water sense labeled home. So do we know kind of like the average or, you know, I know per square feet it would be different, but. Yeah, yeah, that's also a great question. One that uh, obviously, um, you know, has a great impact on the program. Um, the short answer is I don't know. <laughs> the The long answer is we do find that our our products essentially, which are, um, you know, same as standard, they're right off the shelf. They're not anything fancy. You don't have to special order them. You can go to Home Depot and pick up a WaterSense labeled faucet and they're all price ranges. Um, and so they're they're very equivalent to standard products. Um, in terms of design, when we when we speak about like water distribution systems, that's why we really encourage people to look at the design phase um, so that you can uh, incorporate a lot of these systems early on and you don't see additional costs when you're building. Um, but really, I mean, besides uh, perhaps the 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 rating cost, um, there really shouldn't be like an astronomical um, price tag on certifying a home. Right. I don't, I think it's kind of common that you now see a lot more um, appliances and and items that are water sense certified. Yes. Um, and so, and I and it's like I don't believe there's a lot of cost price that's difference in that in that feature as well, because um, it's really going to save you in your home as well. Um, and just back to the fact of the the design phase is a very important phase of building new homes. Because um, I know that we had to come up with a design that worked um, for the water sense feature. So um, I'm sure Ogla has those, you know, an avenue for you to figure those out as well. And we'll all, we're all here to support you um, in um, getting to the 2.0. Absolutely. Certification. So, yes. Um, if you, if you uh, make sure that you've um, gotten um, Ogla's contact information here. And then we also have a copy of the webinar. Um, will be available as well. So thank everyone for attending today and um, look forward to hearing from you in the future. Thank Great. you, Ogla. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.